Friends, we're at Greenwood Cemetery right outside of Fountain City, Tennessee, outside of Knoxville. And there's someone in here that you know their invention, but you didn't know it was them. But I bet when I say the name, it'll ring a bell. Let's go see if we can find him. Stay tuned. So friends, if you come in the entrance right there and you come down, you see this tall cross right here that says right. You see this big memorial right here that says Leith and Cassidy. And you walk right down here. This person invented something that all of us in some form or fashion use and you do not know this guy's name. But when I tell you what he invented, it's going to all make sense. So, George Roby Dempster was an inventor. This is him right here with the cross. He was a restless teenager. At age 14, he hoboed on a train to Virginia where he lied about his age to get a job on the railroad. At age 16, he got a job on an ocean liner, but he was fired when they discovered he was too young. When he was 19 years old, he and his brother went to the Panama Canal to get a job building a canal. This guy is credited with being the first person to use a steam shovel to remove the first dirt on the Pacific side of the new canal. You know, one side was on the Atlantic, one side was on the Pacific. In 1912, he returned to Knoxville, his hometown, where he and his brother began successful construction and machinery companies. However, they both went bankrupt during the Great Depression. Undaunted, he focused on ways to help modernize construction business. He used his knowledge and experience to develop new designs in construction arena, and at the time of his death, he held 75 different patents. His most popular invention was in the area of waste disposal. In 1935, he invented the Dempster Dumpster. Now, I heard it called the Dempsey Dumpster. I'm sure that somewhere along the lines, it changed to the Dempsey Dumpster or people changed it because it was easier to say Dempsey Dumpster than it was Dempster Dumpster. He established the Dempster Brothers Manufacturing Company and the Dempster Dumpster became popular among military use and became famous worldwide. In 1964, he received the U.S. Navy Public Service Award because of the usefulness of his invention. Today, thousands of businesses around the world have a dumpster, thanks to George Dempster. Now you know the dumpster came from Dempster. Who would have ever thunk it? George Dempster, friends. And if you want to pay your respects to George Dempster for creating the dumpster, this right here is how you do it. And you come right out here. George Dempster, friends, the creator of the dumpster. So friends, I'm in Fountain City, and this is Gibbs Drive in North Broadway. The fountain is right down there on the left-hand side. George Dempster lived in this house right here from 1928 to 1932, and it is still here, and it is still very much in use. It's for sale, and it looks like an awesome home, but he actually lived right here, and the house is still here. Another pretty cool little piece of the Dempster story right here in Fountain City, Tennessee, where Dolly Parton was singing. If you went and turn right, the gas station's right there on the right across from the fountain, so she was right down there. Now, it was a long time after 1928 and 32, but that was George Dempster's house right there. So, friends, we're down here at the end of this street right here, and I want you to look at all these areas. You see some of these buildings are period. Look at that building right back over there. This is where they said that it was at the end of the street right by the train tracks which is right here. And these buildings, I don't know about the age of them, but they look like they could be that age. This is where they originally manufactured the very first dumpsters. It was right here. This is where his manufacturing plant was. They have uh, a lot of different businesses in here now. People are selling uh, scrap metal and that kind of stuff. They're doing all kinds of stuff in that building. You saw that truck just pull out, and I see where they've got scrap metal up in there. And I want you to look. There is a dumpster, actually. Now, is that a dumpster dumpster? No, it is not. But this is where they began at, in this building. 
right in here. The first dumpsters were created right here. I saw this building and thought that I would walk down here and take a look. Look at the end of that. Boy, that's old school. I'll see if I can find photos of the plant. Stay tuned. And look at this. This train. It's very cool. So friends, a couple of guys that work here, I think maybe even one of the owners walked out and did confirm that this is in fact the original site of Dempster Dumpsters. And they said that these buildings are original, although some of them have been torn down. They are original to this, to this area. Whenever I'm in the truck, I always catch my microphone on stuff, like the rear view mirror. But he said that there originally was a building right here in the parking lot that got torn down. But this is a fascinating story. He said right in here was, before it was parking, there was a building here. But I think that that's a fascinating story of the person who invented the dumpster that we all use in some capacity or another. So I want to show you, this is actually George Dempster. He went on to become the mayor of Knoxville, and this is an example of where they actually applied for a trademark for the Dempster dumpster. And if you have dumpsters, you got to have trucks. So they actually created dumpster trucks, which are very similar to the modern day uh, dumpster trucks that you see today with the forks on the front, trash trucks. There's his patent for the dumpster trucks right there. You see 1939. And New York was able to clean up their city because of dumpsters. The left pictures are before and the right pictures are after. And this is an interesting letter that I found. And in this letter, it talks about George Dempster being on the $64,000 question. And he answered a $1,000 question and would be asked back the next week. And then you keep on. And he was giving it to other people, giving the money. Something that's interesting in this is this was written to Miss Howard Johnson. Yep, from the Howard Johnson Hotels or motels, had sent him a book about being a hobo. He talked about, in the $64,000 question, being a hobo, and he also talked about actually stealing someone's lunch when he was hungry and when he was a hobo, and I'm going to read the letter to you. Check this out. So this is what the letter said. It says, Dear Miss Johnson, of all my experiences, including all the appearances on the $64,000 question, none has given me the same thrill as when the book, The Way to the Hobo, was actually The Way of the ways of the hobo was delivered to me by my secretary just five minutes ago. I have glanced through this volume and am taking it home tonight and read it from cover to cover. I am sure that I had many experiences which relate to his in his book and it will carry me back 55 years to when I swung on the rods of freight trains heading to Cincinnati, Ohio. One of the requirements of the son's arrest of Knoxville was that the novice should first make a hobo trip from Knoxville to Cincinnati and return. It was over a mountain railroad with 36 tunnels in the days when steam locomotives would nearly smother you to death, especially when they stalled on the grades in the tunnels. Incidentally, I told on the TV about having stolen a man's dinner and took it over into the woods and ate everything in it and threw the bucket away. Shortly after returning to Knoxville, I had a letter from his son stating that his father, prior to his death in 1915, had often told of this incident. Now I am paying it back by giving everyone who came by my plant a free meal. He wanted to reciprocate by inviting me to have his old-fashioned ham dinner with him. The following day, I had a letter from a lady who lived next door to them. She was very familiar with the pilfering and stated that the man whose bucket I took was a crack shot with a shotgun and perhaps would have winged me if I had seen me get away with his dinner. She also invited me by for a ham dinner, which is, as you know, a very favorite pastime in that wonderful state. I am going to accept both invitations later. So there's a second page, but this was an interesting guy. George Dempster was a hobo, guys, that went on to be a millionaire. What an incredible person. What an incredible story. Here's page too. It says, in the meantime, we have passed beyond the 90,000 mark of free meals extended to strangers who have passed between our gates in the intervening 55 years. After I pass the 100,000 mark, I will probably be able to ease my conscience for having, for the first and only time, violated the Bible injunction which states, thou shalt not steal. If business or pleasure should take any of you through Knoxville, may I hope that you stop by our plant to have lunch in order that we may rapidly go beyond the 100,000. It was kind of you to send me the book which I 
I shall read carefully and place it in my library. With all good wishes, I remain George R. Dempster, President, Dempster Brothers. Now, the thing I want you to think about is the plant was right on the railroad. So George Dempster, when he became rich, paid it forward, if you will, or paid it back by allowing people that would come to the plant and I would assume a lot of them were probably hobos because they were right on the uh, train tracks, he would give them free meals. He was working on a 100,000 of them, friends. Now, that's the kind of guy that I can get behind. Also, he's a Bible believer. Today, I'm telling you that George Dempster is with Jesus in heaven, and I'm thankful to know this story. Thank you so much for watching and tighten up. And now we know that Dempster invented the dumpster. Yes, he did. If you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.